and uh, we will start uh, our work uh, again uh, with a presentation of uh, Anastasia Kokori about uh, as a clock uh, project we will hear now. So Hello. you, Anastasia, welcome to share your screen and start uh, presenting. Okay. Can you see my screen? Hope. Yes. I don't know, but probably the voice could be louder. Um, can you hear me? Maybe give me a second. I will try to fix that. Yes. Uh, speak closer to the microphone. What about now? It's okay. It's, it's better? Okay. Um, I will use my headphones. So, um, thank you, Garazina, and to the organizers uh, for this uh, workshop. I'm uh, Anastasia, and um, um, I'm working for the CSED um, Center for uh, Space Exochemistry Data in UCL. And together with Angelos Tiaras, um, I'm representing the whole team now, we are uh, coordinating the ExoClock project, which is um, a project dedicated to maintain the ephemerides of the aerial space mission. And my talk will be uh, about uh, different parts of the project, the organization, and also some of the results we have had so, so far. So uh, before uh, I talk about the project, I would like to just uh, briefly mention the Ariel um, mission uh, for those that are not aware. So Ariel is um, a space uh, telescope um, by the European Space Agency, an M4 mission. It is prepared, it has started the preparation actually, and is prepared for launch in 2029. It will be a telescope with an aperture of one meter and it will carry a spectrograph to cover um, several wavelengths, as you can see here, a wide range between uh, 0 0.5 to 7.8 micrometers. And the main uh, my questions that we'll address are what are exoplanets made of, how they form and evolve. And um, the main goal uh, to, is uh, this one. And to answer this, uh, we will try to observe uh, 1,000 exoplanet atmospheres. And the atmosphere is the main window uh, to do that, is our only tool to access this information. So um, Ariel is uh, going to observe one planet after the other. And as you also like imagine, a space telescope uh, is very important and uh, time is very critical for a space telescope. And this is exactly where we try to support the space telescope through ground-based observations and through uh, much smaller, let's say, telescopes as the ones you can see here with uh, 10 or 11 inch or even smaller telescopes. And um, we are now on that stage on the preparation of the mission. And as uh, part of the ephemerides group of um, Ariel, we have um, started this effort quite early to make sure that all uh, targets will be properly observed and monitored until that day. So for this reason, we initiated the project, the ExoClock project. Um, it's although I think it's um, two years and a half now uh, that um, uh, we are in operation. And um, ExoClock is um, it's a community, it's a platform, it's a project to maintain this ephemerides. And uh, it's uh, an effort at the same time to make the best use of resources that are already available out there. Because we know there are ground-based uh, networks but we try to organize them to make the best use of them. And another scope of our project is to connect the communities and bring also people outside, uh, um, from outside uh, into science. So like amateurs, schools, people that didn't, didn't have the opportunity, let's say, to um, contribute to science, to a real scientific effort. So it's, uh, it's at the same time an effort to bring everyone together and contribute in the best way. Our project can be described by three uh, eyes. So um, it is inclusive because we include different people with uh, different backgrounds, professionals, amateur students, industry partners, anyone that could participate and has them, um, even the smallest equipment, let's say. 
or access to that. Uh, it is integrated since we combine data from different resources, from space um, telescopes, from the literature, so from different papers that are already available, and from ground-based networks, as we said. And finally, it is interactive um, since it is uh, made in a way to include personalized features, user-friendly tools, and of course, um, it's a community, so we try to also maintain this part with uh, different ways that I will also mention later on. Regarding the inclusive aspect, um, in order to, to include as many people as possible and also inexperienced users, like um, even um, amateur astronomers that didn't have the experience before uh, with transit observations, we have uh, prepared a separate website, uh, which is called the ExoWatch Spies um, uh, uh, website. And uh, there we share different tools, uh, protocols for observation. Um, the user-friendly tools I'm referring is uh, the software mainly that has been prepared by our team to make sure that we also maintain homogeneity in the data. And we also um, organize sessions, we have some um, educational materials, meetings to, to facilitate, facilitate any level of uh, experience. And we have had also many observers that didn't have um, experience at all and managed with this material to, to get the first uh, transit uh, ever that they had. So this is very uh, positive. And um, another uh, thing that is quite important is that all observers become co-authors in our publication. publications. So, this is something that we really respect um, because uh, it, it's something that uh, we, we value, like any observation that is important for a project, uh, it's a, an opportunity for the observer to become a co-author. Regarding the integrated aspect, so we know there are all the different resources and this is a main task for our uh, project to combine this data to make the best use of them. So we have data from space for targets that are not really easy and accessible from the ground, like from TESS, K2, Kepler uh, telescopes. We have the literature data, which are all the different um, uh, data uh, that have been made for, um, for planets and uh, are uh, in papers of the past and currently. And we have a group that is collecting this data and evaluating um, to make them part of the um, platform. And then we have, of course, the ground-based telescopes. It is our network where we have um, a separate um, uh, website where people can uh, have their accounts and get uh, a list of targets. Uh, we have also collaboration with other networks and we really um, encourage this. It's very important for our project. So with the Telescope Live by Mark Roqueto, we have a synergy with Exoplanet Transit Database uh, with Philip Walter. And then we have a synergy with Exoplanets Watch, uh, which is in the US, uh, coordinated by Rob Salem. So um, as you see, quite many networks, I'm sure there are more, but uh, we're trying uh, with different collaborations to maintain this part and uh, efficiently um, coordinate this, uh, this part uh, in order not to um, waste resources. And finally, the interactive community. So. Um, this is the last eye of um, ExoClock. We have a separate page, as I mentioned, where participants, observers, either amateur or professional, or even schools, can get their personalized account and uh, can register their telescopes, their latitude, anything, anything that is important to get a personalized uh, schedule. And then they can see which targets to observe, um, which targets are more important or less important so we have a prioritization system and this can lead them and guide them for each uh, night then we have also um, feedback that is provided to the participants to both improve their, partic their participation and their um, knowledge and also to make the light curves better and achieve the best and we have um, um, a review team that is doing that we also have uh, monthly newsletters to provide news about um, the aerial mission, but also about uh, the project, educational material. We have Slack channels. So we try with different ways to maintain a community, an active community as much as possible. And of course, every time we learn, so there are things that are uh, getting uh, step by step. 
we have had uh, two publications so far. So our first was last um, year. It is accessible um, from this link, if you're interested. It was published at the Experimental Astronomy Journal. And um, apart from the first results, this uh, publication includes um, the framework, the organization, everything that um, um, characterizes the project. So you will find all this uh, information there, even things that I couldn't fit within this uh, presentation because there are so many details. So this is a document, the first publication, which is also found in the document and uh, we analyze every aspect. And our second publication where um, it is uh, published at the JS uh, journal. So it is accessed um, from this link. Um, uh, you will find, um, it's actually the first large scale study where we have updated the ephemerides for 180 planets. And it is um, a combined effort where we integrated 1,600 observations from ground-based telescopes, 2,500 literature mid-time points, which were collected from the, um, uh, from the literature data, as I mentioned before. And then uh, we included also some uh, first uh, observations uh, from the ETB, which also uh, is um, important because we, we have the first collaboration here. And finally, we have updated exoclock network capabilities. So based on all the uh, information we have from the equipment and telescopes uh, from uh, our participants, we managed to get a better update on the capabilities. And I will uh, just um, share some things here. Um, of course, you can find more information within the publications, but briefly. So um, the first product, we can say, from uh, our pub first publication, um, uh, this was even from the first one, uh, we have included an exoplanet characterization catalog where um, there are, this is for all planets, you will find uh, the transit parameters, the stellar parameters and also the planetary parameters, uh, a consistent catalog, a homogeneous catalog, which is very important, especially when we're talking about a space mission to have homogeneity. So this is also accessible to anyone interested. Everything is um, within our website, which is exoclock.space. It's something that you can use for other purposes as well. Everything is double checked. And I mentioned that because I know there are also other efforts going on um this is open then we have um, an exoclock network uh, observations which are also accessible to anyone um, interested so when you go to our website you will find the exoclock observations and you can see here where i have um, made this uh, red circle you can access um, and press view where it says that available for those that are not available is under preparation um, and processing. So these data, you can access them, of course, with copyrights, but everything is open. That is what I'm saying. They're all light curves and the process as well. And then, of course, we have the literature data where you can see uh, which data we have added from the literature, which is also a very a large uh, effort. Um, and uh, in combination with the exoclock data, with the data we used from our ground uh, network or other networks. Another product is um, the final and the most important for us, the catalog of um, updated um, uh, ephemerides. So um, this is again accessible from the website. Is ephemerides, this, these are ephemerides you can trust for other purposes. Of course, we are part of a mission, but um, these are open to any community interesting to, to have um, a plan, an observing plan for other purposes. And you can, uh, you can access the ephemerides here, of course, through the paper as well, but there is also uh, this opportunity through the website. Now, um, just a, a small part about the impact of um, the updated ephemerides. Um, with uh, our observation, with our updated uh, result, 85% of the planets have more precise ephemerides, which is the majority of the planets. And without these updates, 40% we have would have had uh, unprecise ephemerides in 2029. Uh, apologize for the 28. This has changed. Um, 29, where is the launch uh, date for the mission? 
So it's almost half of the planet, it's a lot. And um, these planets, as you can see here at the diagram, the red and the green points, these were planets that have um, had uh, before updates, either initial um, uncertainties that were very high or they had large rifts, which means that they were unexpected um, time shifts in the, in the transits in their ephemerides. And um, some uh, words about uh, the status that we are now. Um, so we actually had the, um, uh, the pleasure to launch in EPSC before uh, the, the lockdowns and everything in September 2019. And uh, we have now 450 participants. You can see that the majority are amateur astronomers, which makes us very happy. Uh, coming from many countries around the world, you can see not only European countries, but others. Um, and um, at the system, we have um, at the moment um, more than 500 telescopes registered, small or medium telescopes. And you can see that 6 to 40 inches and uh, 3,500 observations, um, which are for 330 targets out of them. Uh, current um, mission reference sample, which is the current uh, known is 570. This is, of course, increasing every time. And um, um, as I mentioned, we, we had uh, two publications with the participation of uh, amateur astronomers. The majority was actually amateurs. We are doing meetings, newsletters. Uh, we have working groups on different subjects. This is just indicative. We try to maintain this active community, and I'm happy to see also that um, uh, in the participation list uh, now there are many uh, people that are also part of the project. And I'm um, closing with some future plans. So we, uh, we are now pre preparing the third publication, and uh, we will include uh, for the first time space data uh, from Kepler K2 and TESS. We'll have new literature data, new targets, of course, more data from EPD. And for this, uh, there are many people working. <laughs> uh, it's a very large team. And um, new planets in the scheduler. We are starting um, a collaboration with the Twinkly Space Mission. So we'll have even more targets um, um, as part of our scheduler. So I will close with that slide. Um, we are open for collaboration, anyone interested? And just to, share, to say that um, the next talk, I think is Mercedes, um, has used the Europlanet uh, uh, telescopes. She will share more about it, but um, it was very, very important to have uh, their participation as well. So thank you for that. Thank you for giving the access, the opportunity. And if you have more questions, let me, I'll be, be happy. Thank you very much, Anastasia, for your very important, uh, for the community work. I'm sure that uh, everybody participating and listening to your talk here, the conference will look uh, to your website and see how they could contribute. Do you have questions? May I ask a question? Yes, please. Yes, Anastasia. <laughs> Hello, yes, Anastasia. I, <laughs> uh, I was checking now the website of ExoClock and uh, I saw that uh, you provide the scheduler, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is that simple that anyone who wants to contribute uh, with data just uh, uh, advises from the, this software, from this uh, scheduler, and just provide data? It's that simple? Yes, uh, if you register um, the scheduler, I don't know if you have uh, had the opportunity to see a bit how it looks. You can uh, actually define also your horizon, so things yes, like yes, obstacles. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, so far uh, it's very effective. I mean, we didn't have any, I don't know, like outsiders or something, but um, this is the reason that is personalized as well. So you, it can give you the exact targets. It, you will have even 
uh, a small lift. It will retrieve um, even with a smaller telescope. Yes, I did experiments uh, for today, for example, and I saw many targets, for example, from Athens. From Athens. Um, okay, should we, for example, give priority to those that are already mentioned as high priority targets, or we should consult with you first? Uh, so, yes, um, with high priority, we actually suggest these ones uh, because the high priorities have the uh, highest and the largest uncertainties, or then we have also the um, so-called alert targets. So if you check at the website, we have a special list which says alert. And these are also quite important. We have participants that usually if they have uh, large telescopes, they focus on these ones because uh, we have less participants with large facilities, with large telescopes. So the alert targets are also important because they're unexpected drifts that were actually arised from the participants. So drifts that were not known before. So both high priority and alerts, I would say, especially for a large telescope. The rest yeah. are not that much. Thank you and good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We have uh, one question in the chat asking to tell a little about Twinkle. Ah, <laughs> yes. Hi, hi, Rodney. Um, uh, actually, yes, Twinkle is not a uh, priority, it's not the main uh, thing we are doing at the Twinkle space mission. I think um, I'm not really the responsible person for to talk about Twinkle. I know it's in uh, their preparation. Actually, there are some targets that are overlapping. Um, Twinkle is a smaller space mission, let's say, for those that uh, are not aware of that. And uh, the priority for uh, Twinkle is not exoplanets. We'll do some exoplanets. There are other targets as well. And um, uh, we have uh, we have had um, actually the decision together with the participants to support this mission as well for their planning since uh, Twinkle wanted also to to maintain and uh, monitor the ephemerides of the targets. So it's an opportunity through Exoclock since it's already organized and some targets are already included. We will include more. Uh, it's important that um, we have overlapping in some targets. So we, again, uh, achieve what we want, avoid the, the waste of resources and make this collaboration nicer. And within the next months, I think we'll have um, more news about Winkle. So we can then share uh, through Exoclock as well. So thank you very much, Anastasia. There is one more question in the chat. I hope you will answer. 